And we move along now as we bring in the state auditor who is running for Attorney General, J.B. McCuskey, who joins us via telephone. J.B., good morning to you. Good morning. It's cool to hold hands if we're praying. <laughs> well, they weren't. <laughs> I think they were. We I think they were tussling. I think they were tussling during the break a little bit. <laughs> Absolutely you know, not. You know, Bill and Maria are very accomplished people. You know, yeah. and Bill was an admiral, president of the Berkeley County Commission. Maria is very competitive, editor of the Journal. She's in charge of many things at hospice, and before that, in another life, she was running things in the southwestern part of Pennsylvania <laughs> as part of the Lawrence and Crime family. So, although that was not your maiden name, so I really it was shouldn't, not. I shouldn't it give was that to not. your husband. That's okay, right? That's but okay. she's but they're both very competitive people. So, JB, sometimes I got to step in and referee a little bit around here. I you? could see that, and, and I didn't know that you were um, big with the hospice world. That we have had in my family a little bit more uh, experience with hospice than I would have liked, but it is one of the most beautiful organizations there is. It, it, Thank it you. Turns it turns tragedies into great memories, and I. I don't know that you can put a price on that. And and also giving tribute to uh, to Maria, uh, the hospice gets a lot of the money through Medicare and Medicaid, but that does not yeah. pay for all of it. Uh, Maria, uh, along with David Asham, uh, Bavarian, Ann, do an absolutely phenomenal job of fundraising. So our local yep. hospice uh, is well equipped to meet all the needs of the family, both the patient and the family. Thanks not only to the regular funding, but also in large part to Maria. Well, and it's yeah. the, it's the as you, I'm sure, are aware, JB, it's really the community support that, um, you know, that, that is so um, needed and, and yep. really so vital to the work that, that I do, that the agency does, that hospices all over West Virginia do. So um, thank yeah. you for that. Thank you for your kindness. No, words. thank you. And, and my family and I are very involved in, in the hospices here. Uh, fundraising efforts and um, we're, we're constantly proud to be doing that great yeah and JB you got to see Maria emceeing the event that's coming up in about three weeks because <laughs> she's just energy in motion the entire time and if it's if it's a little bit more than three weeks I might be able to make it out there. <laughs> and and what you do as after you've been there a couple so times you watch Maria in action you leave your billfold in the car <laughs> locked you don't bring your <laughs> yeah. billfold with you because you're going to give all the money she's, away. She's a fundraiser. She's well, a fundraiser. Yeah, exactly. And if, if, if you're anything like me, Bill, um, it, I need my wife to leave her billfold of the car. Yeah. Mine, <laughs> mine never leaves my back pocket anyways, um, according to her. So uh, it's, it's really, it's, really her, yeah. it's her credit card that I'm worried about, not mine. And JB, I want to ask you a couple of questions as you bridge from, from your current job as auditor into yeah. uh, attorney general, which if you win the uh, primary, you move on to the general. Uh, and, uh, and, and that is Eric Householder is running for your old, your current seat, uh, yes. I should say. Along with some other people. Yes, yes. But in, in particular, Eric, because his ad uh, in which he talks about uh, people eff effectively corruption, people stealing from West Virginia, and yeah. he's going to put a stop to that. Uh, is there that much of that going on that you encountered during your time as auditor? And is there still too much of that going on? So the answer to all of those questions is yes. Um, we created something called the Public Integrity and Fraud Unit uh, about six years ago, about a year into my term. It, it got stood up completely. And in the time since we built this group, which is um, essentially prosecutors from around the state, uh, we built a team with them, along with our investigators and, and our general counsel. Uh, we just finished our 45th felony fraud conviction um, just out of our unit uh, in that time. And that is these convictions are, are, you know, really a team effort between us and our uh, incredible county prosecutors around the state. But we have 93 felony cases pending as well. And so, uh, you know, you can add those numbers together. But at the end of the day, um, there is an enormous amount of fraud happening in West Virginia, and um, we are really, really proud of, of the team that we've built, uh, the emphasis that we've put on actually convicting folks, and um, and and unfortunately, uh, the next auditor is going to, to have to continue our effort because um, the cleanup isn't done yet. Are these thieves elected officials, or are they those who contract with the state to do business, or both? Uh, it's all of the above. 
it's all of the above. And, and, and what we like to say in our office is that there's no such thing as a small fraud, just one that we catch quickly um, because people become emboldened as they begin stealing. Uh, and usually the reasons that cause people to to stray away from their their um, their service related duties are um, addictions of of one sort or the other. It's um, you know adultery, drug addiction, gambling addiction, things like that, and uh, they they tend to spiral. And, and people become emboldened when they need more money to to, to feed those addictions. And so um, you know it, it's very very incumbent upon us to both monitor. Uh, for fraud, and then to also uh, be very, very um, intentional about making sure that people are punished um, extensively for these things, because when you steal from the public, uh, you're stealing from everybody. And not only are you stealing money, but, but importantly, you're also eroding the public's trust in government, which is um, very, very hard to regain. And then bridge for me the connection between the auditor's investigative work and then the attorney general of the state and those two offices and how they might work together on a case such as the ones you're describing? Yeah, there really isn't too much of a bridge there. Um, the attorney general doesn't have the same prosecutorial authority that the, that the auditor's office does. It sounds kind of counterintuitive, but uh, the way that our state is set up um, and, and the way that I believe that it should continue to be is that our county prosecutors... Um, really take the lead on these things. And the auditor's office um, is sort of the um, the aggregator of that team. Then connect for me your desire to go from attorney general, uh, I'm sorry, from auditor to attorney general. Yeah. So for me, it's always been about serving the people of West Virginia. You know, I, I grew up in a family of public servants and it's been instilled in me uh, from the beginning of my life, a couple things. Number one, uh, the greatness of West Virginia and the incredible, um, the incredible opportunity that a place like ours has uh, because of the, the value set of the people that we get to be neighbors with. Uh, but more than that is the, the requirement for people um, who decide to be servants that it is, it is truly your mission in life to make sure that those around you um, are enabled with the same opportunities that you might have had. And so the attorney general's office gives anybody who, who wants to be a servant, and, 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 and you know my life has been dedicated to this, the opportunity to defend our state against those who want to see us fail. And, and anybody who, who has been following politics can tell that there are those in this country, um, and a lot of them are very powerful, who want who don't want to see a place like West Virginia be successful because they don't want to see a state that has traditional family values that has um, sort of a, a slower, more traditional lifestyle um, and an economy that's based on natural resource production and is it is based on um, a lot of the things that the left finds important. They don't want to see that be successful because they know that the rest of the country will start to flock to places like ours. Um, and so, you know, the attorney general gets to say to those people, we're not going to let the EPA shut down these kind of jobs. We're not going to let the Department of Education tell our schools what our children can learn. We're not going to allow uh, rogue, unelected bureaucrats to say, you can't make money that way, and we're going to push every single person in these rural areas into big cities. Um, because this is a lifestyle that matters to young families, and this is a lifestyle that I believe is going to attract young families from all over this country who are saying, I don't like living in Baltimore. I don't like living in Dallas. I don't like living in Charlotte or Raleigh or Atlanta. I want to have, um, I want to live in a place where my family and I can feel safe and that our value set is, is respected and, um, and supported. Uh, good morning, JB. Uh, your opponent, hey, Bill, what's going on, buddy? Doing well, thank you, JB. Uh, your opponent, Mike Stewart, very early in his campaign, uh, made a statement that he'd like to migrate a lot of the prosecuting county prosecuting attorney's functions to the attorney general. Uh, he's backed off on that statement uh, quite a bit, but this kind of begs the question to me and others: 
What's the respective role between the attorney general and the county prosecuting, prosecuting attorneys? And how clear cut is that line of demarcation? Yeah, so the, 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 the line of demarcation is very clear. And for me, it's all about local control. And, it, you know, if you're somebody that lives out in the eastern panhandle, my presumption is is that you would much rather have Jefferson, Morgan, Berkeley County officials handling these things than somebody in Charleston. And, you know, Charleston is um, a, a long way away from the eastern panhandle. And, and as we like to say, it, it, you can't hear a shouting from there. And so for me, ensuring that the people of Berkeley County's criminal prosecutions are handled by Berkeley County people uh, in Berkeley County grand juries and in Jefferson County grand juries is really, really important. The attorney general's job is to handle criminal appeals uh, as well as to provide guidance to uh, our local county officials as it relates to um, the constitutionality and legality of their actions. And I believe um, in, in the, the rule of law, and I believe that the, the, our laws and constitutions say what they're supposed to be, and I don't believe in aggregating power into Charleston at the expense of our local government. And so for me, uh, I have been very steadfast in my belief that our county prosecutors should maintain uh, the current constitutional and, and code-driven authorities that they have, and the attorney general's office should maintain its. Uh, you know, I, I, I'm not somebody who's trying to aggregate power into myself and into my office and in Charleston. So, JB, why why then this particular race? You're, I, I get that you want to continue your public service, that maybe this seemed like a good avenue to go down. You're sounding kind of like a governor. I don't know. I've been listening to too many. Well, no, you're not sounding like the current people who are running for governor. But um, why this particular office? Yeah, so I have a legal career that, that has spanned, you know, the, the, the better part of two decades. And I started my legal career at a place called the American Center for Law and Justice with a guy named Jay Seculo doing um, First Amendment law, religious freedom law, and importantly, working on um, international law to ensure that um, – faith leaders, uh, be they, um, you know, rabbis or, or, or priests and ministers and, um, and of, of all faiths who, who live in countries where their religion isn't uh, allowed, essentially. Um, we, we've helped get a, a myriad of people out of prisons and, and allowing kids to pray at school and, and, and all of the things that, that we believe that, that the religious freedoms guaranteed in the United States Constitution, uh, which are eroded, um, we spent a lot of time doing that, and it was a, a, an incredible experience working with lawyers of that caliber um, on cases that ended up in the Supreme Court. Um, and so then I sort of moved on into, into private practice where I, you know, I worked for coal companies and I worked for oil and gas companies, and, and I defended uh, doctors and, and uh, various other professionals from professional malpractice, understanding how, how viscerally our federal government works to um, slow the growth of the industries in West Virginia. And so those two experiences combined with being the state auditor, understanding the totality of our bureaucracy, understanding um, how and why it is we fail um, at properly educating our kids and building appropriate infrastructure and, and caring for those who, who can't care for themselves, uh, gives me a, a really unique skill set um, that fits perfectly into the role of our attorney general, um, which is, one, defending, like I said before, our state against attacks from those that don't live here, those that don't support us, and those that don't want to see us be successful, but also helping the next governor reorganize our bureaucracy into um, an efficient, effective, and transparent organization that delivers results for taxpayers and doesn't always ask them for, for more money to solve their failures. I, I think what you can see if you look at the, you know, the sort of recent history of West Virginia, when a bureaucrat is asked, why is it that our school system is 48th? Why is it that our infrastructure is 50th? Why is it that CPS can't monitor children who are dying at age 14 in homes um, of emaciation? You know, why is it that we can't handle these things? They say, well, we don't have enough funding. 
Well, it, it, that's a tired, lazy answer. Um, and I'm very excited as to, to, to be the state's general counsel, to work with the next governor to say, look, here are the ways in which they are failing. And here is the process problem, not the funding problem that's causing these issues. Um, and in any great uh, reorganization of a big uh, group, any big company that's, that's trying to reorganize itself, the two people in charge are the general counsel and the CEO. And I am really, really excited to, um, to, to both defend West Virginia and to, and to help rebuild our bureaucracy into the, uh, into the, to the organization that it should be. JB, let me shift quickly to a campaign philosophy question. Uh, I understand you, your campaign a great deal on social media. The ones of us that are not on social media do not see that. But I am struck by the fact that you have uh, done very little advertising in the Eastern Panhandle. You've been here some, but as far as advertising, I see very little other than perhaps social media. Yeah, so we have a, an enormous amount of direct mail going out to the Eastern Panhandle. Uh, we have radio going into the Eastern Panhandle. The, the thing that's difficult about television in the Eastern Panhandle is you have to buy the D.C. media market. Unless you go on cable, JB, expensive. just, just well, from we, my... we are on cable, okay. and we're on uh, over the top. So if you have YouTube TV or Hulu TV, uh, my TV ads will be all over the place. Um, and, we're, and I believe we're advertising on your radio station as well. Uh, but the Eastern Panhandle, and, and I've been out there two, three times a month for the last probably seven years... Um, the Eastern Panhandle is a place where it's very hard to buy broadcast TV. Um, and so our campaign has been very, very focused on always using a positive message. Um, we're not into to tearing anybody else down. Uh, I believe in, in my campaign and I believe that, you know, my message, my experience, um, my personality is, is great. And we want everyone to know who I am and why I'm going to be successful. And, and we don't necessarily... Um, think that you have to tear somebody else down to, um, to, to build yourself up. And so, you know, the Eastern Panhandle, it just simply by virtue of having to buy the D.C. media market, is very, very hard um, to, to do broadcast TV on. And I think you'll probably even see um, some of the really big races, their, their ad buys out in the Eastern Panhandle are, are, are less because it's just so expensive. It, it costs almost as much to run a message in the Eastern Panhandle as it does to the entire rest of the state. Fair enough. Again, uh, I was just going with my my personal exposure, and I have seen uh, ads for a lot of the candidates, but I've not seen ads for you, and it, it struck me as, as somewhat odd. So. Sure, and, and I'll tell you, Bill, so, you know, we've raised a, a million, a million one hundred thousand dollars in, in a Republican primary, um, which is an enormous amount of money, and nobody's ever Nobody in a race that wasn't governor or senate has ever come close to raising that much money in a primary. Um, and, you know, the, the people that you see on broadcast TV have either put in or raised three and four and five and six million dollars. And so while a million dollars sounds like an enormous amount of money, and it is, um, it's, it's, it's a different level uh, when, when somebody has access to two and three and four times more. Yeah, I had heard that you had raised quite a bit of money, and that added to the confusion of why I did not had not seen some ads here. Yeah, so. and, and at some point offline, I can show you what the what the actual cost of of running an ad on on Good Morning America or Fox News uh, or, or Fox Broadcast out there. It it is <laughs> it, it it's it's astronomical. Sure. J.B. McCuskey is our guest. He is a candidate for attorney general in the state. Uh, currently, the auditor. In West Virginia, we have about three minutes left. JB, here's your opportunity to openly campaign for the seat for our audience. The mic is yours. Yeah, so I, I really, really appreciate the, the time that you guys are giving me here today. And, and I will also say that, you know, having the opportunity to have been the auditor for the last seven and a half years and spend an enormous amount of time um, with your listeners, uh, whether it's it's working on uh, county and, and local and city issues and, and working with mayors and city councilmen. The Eastern Panhandle is truly uh, a shining star in West Virginia. And uh, it's really incumbent upon the people in Charleston who, um, particularly the bureaucrats who, who often, you know, they look at the Eastern Panhandle as the, as, the, as the goose that laid the golden egg. 
uh, but very infrequently get out there to understand the actual issues that affect the panhandle, um, that I am very, very committed, and I've spent a, a great amount of time understanding on the ground uh, the issues and opportunities that exist in the eastern panhandle. And as attorney general, I am completely and totally committed to continuing to be on the ground with the people of Berkeley, Morgan, Jefferson counties, um, ensuring that they have access to their government. Because what we like to say in my office is that, you know, it's not it's not the job of the people who live uh, other places than Charleston to come to Charleston to see their government. The government needs to be there, too, because the eastern panhandle is, is part of our district. And as we move forward, West Virginia has this intense opportunity for growth. And you can see it, um, you know, whether it be with the, you know, the, the incredible new jobs that are all that are coming to uh, the Ohio River Valley uh, up, up north and, and particularly in the eastern panhandle. We have to defend the reason that people want to be here. And the reason that people want to be here is that West Virginia offers a different lifestyle with a different value set because the people here are different. We are uh, we are kind and honest and generous, and we are humble, and we believe in very small, limited government, freedom for our people, and our federal government and people from states that aren't like us have, have been actively trying to destroy that. And it is my mission as Attorney General to ensure that West Virginians continue to live in freedom and that we can really attract young families just like mine who are looking for a different and better way to raise their children to be able to move to West Virginia and continue to live the lifestyle that that our amazing people have built and grown for the last hundred years. Um, serving the people of West Virginia has been the honor of my lifetime, and I am very, very excited about continuing to do that in the role of attorney general. Um, and I'm just so thankful to everybody in West Virginia who supported me the last two elections. And I'm very excited for May 14th. And, and I'm humbly and and um, and honestly ask for every single person listening for their vote because I, I believe um, in West Virginia's greatness and I have the skill set and the experience to be the next great attorney general following in the lines of, of Patrick Morsey. JB, thanks so much for your time this morning. Best of luck to you coming up on Election Day. Thank you, guys. You all have a wonderful day, and I'll look forward to seeing you guys out in the Panhandle next week. Thank, Thank you, sir. JB. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. Bye, guys.